Welcome to War of the Weird, a war between friends where the stranger the discovery, the greater chance of victory. At the dawning of the second year, Broomy and Mystic are back at it again with this week's battle. Mass Mortality Event versus Foreskin Folly. Hello and welcome to War of the Weirds. I'm Broomy. And I'm Mystic. And we're here to tell one of another the strangest stories we can find and try to beat one another to death mm-hmm. later on. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we're trying to one up each other with uh, strange true stories because we both enjoy them very much. Uh, yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm doing well. I think it's funny how like the, when this started, like the description was like a tale of two friends, and now it's just like I'm gonna beat you to death. You're like okay, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Stay uh, tuned, know, folks, for the story arc to continue. It's a great, um, it's a great arc. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a vengeful arc followed by a redemption arc. So um, I was trying to think of a. St- I can't. No story is coming to mind that is like. It starts off as two friends, and then, oh, Star Wars Episode One. <laughs> oh yeah, or like uh, Spider Man with uh, the Green Goblin, you know, the son, right? And oh then, sure, yeah. yeah, James Franco and Toby. Right. Or like Thor and Loki, or like every, or like every, every story ever told. Apparently. Yeah, <laughs> Cain and Abel, you know, just uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, but I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, I know. Uh, I just wanted to real quick, just be in, in true War of the Weirds uh, fashion, digress for just a second before we share our stories uh, to talk about something weird that's happening in the world right now. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I don't know what this could be. The world is extremely stable, and yeah, I, I yeah. doubt that this is an odd thing. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, try to, we we've we we have a tendency to kind of stay away from politics a little bit, but I think it is worth addressing that um, just this has been the news a little bit um, that uh, former Israeli space security chief of uh, says that extraterrestrials exist and Trump knows about it. <laughs> I mean, um, all right. So that's the headline from NBC. Uh, he said that there is a galactic federation that's been waiting for humans to, quote, reach a stage where we will understand what space and spaceships are. Uh, he goes on to talk about how humans and, or like Earth, is, this galactic federation has existed for a long time and that there is an underground uh research facility on mars where there are already human researchers there um plus like we we work with the aliens like you know rubbing elbows with them oh, this is uh, fun where is he yeah. like wh- what is that come from though yeah. is what i'm saying well, like this guy where where's he actually getting that from because that just sounds like anybody thinking of a science fiction scenario <laughs> yeah but. yeah well so he said that he is uh uh, he was he's the former head of Israel's defense ministry space uh space directorate so he was a like a high i mean he's like the head of space security uh for israel's uh government so he i mean it's a he's not just yeah. like off the street but and it's he even like said, oh go, oh like where is he what is his knowledge of this well he my, said, so yeah mm-hmm. no, go, go ahead, ahead. I, uh, well, he I just, was god damn you <laughs> <laughs> you go. I'm not going to talk. All right. I was just saying the idea that aliens are waiting, like they're just sitting around being like, they're not ready, but we're waiting and watching. How would he know that ever? <laughs> you know, well, he's, you know, what because I'm he's no, because he, they, he's uh no, they, we, so his, his assertion is that the U S government and other um, like major world powers um, know about this and if like are on on like have contracts um, and treaties with uh, some of the aliens around us. Oh, um, so they're just regularly like, interacting with aliens, right? Right. Yeah, our government officials and researchers and NASA, uh, you know, 
they're they're regularly interacting but they have all like been sworn to secrecy for the sake of um hysteria you know Mm -hmm. um and he's a he's a professor um and he's like been doing this for like 30 years been doing like he's been like this you know like a great uh i don't mean i don't know like great i'm not i don't know about politics i'm not endorsing anybody or not but he's been like he's been involved in this he would know like this has been his life's work as being like working Mm -hmm. his way up through bureaucracy to uh yeah um he said that we have american and astronauts and alien representatives working together on mars doing research um exploring space um and but he and he also was like i look i 100 percent. he's super laid back guy he was he's not like this like pulling out hair like neurotic that you would like think of uh he's he was just like real laid back and he's like look um i know this sounds crazy i 100 percent know that it sounds crazy but uh and like you know five ten years ago i would have been like locked up but i like i have I'm a professional. I'm an expert in my field. I have PhDs. I've written books. I teach at prestigious college, colleges. And now it's just like, I have nothing to lose. Like, I'm just, you know, going to go ahead and put this out there now that I have the credentials to back up my claims. Mm. Um, it seems like he has all that to lose. He just listed yeah, all the things yeah. he had to lose. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I yeah, teach yeah. at colleges. That could be taken away from you, buddy. <laughs> right. Um, and, but, uh, yeah. But what's, like, the last, the last two things I have to say about it is, like... I'm sure, I'm sure. Well, first of all, first of all, like the Pentagon has like come out at the end of 2020 and was like, yeah, we got UFOs. Here's footage of stuff. Uh, and like the, nobody talked about that. Like that was in the news, like official press statements. And then yeah, apparently Trump it, was, Trump was going to yeah. do like a press conference about it. And then they canceled it. He canceled it. Uh yeah, he's, he he was Trump's like messaging was uh, he had a space force or something some yeah, shit yeah, like that yeah yeah uh, he was like a big part of his like re uh, you know his platform when campaigning mm-hmm. I think yeah yeah uh, um, but the the last thing is like <laughs> I cannot think of one single reason why a politician from another country would seek to disclose information even if he is fabricating it that might make us question trump or any any politician but i can't i can't i don't i don't think there's one single reason why uh why someone like another country would want to create turmoil uh, within the u.s so you know these gotta no, be true it's gotta be that, true i've never even heard of such a thing uh yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah no uh it seems like a lot it seems yeah, like a lot yeah. of people even if there's all citing non-disclosure agreements yeah you know yeah yeah. To have this very specific scenario, and he's the guy to come out and talk about it. It's just kind of yeah. weird. Yeah. Um. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah. I, did yeah. you look to see what Tom DeLonge had to say about it? I did not. But Tom DeLonge, know... the lead singer of Blink-182, yeah. who then became the uh, CEO, I think. I don't know mm-hmm. if he is or not, but he's a higher up at a com- at uh one of the largest and most uh prestigious uh ufo researching companies uh yeah. out there yeah but but yeah you didn't look into his his opinion on this i didn't see if he said anything about it no no well uh our loss uh yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, do you want to before we get into the stories make it a tradition where we play your new game or whatever oh <laughs> from last week's episode yeah let's do that let's do that let me uh i actually I, so yeah i i started to tell my fiance about this and she was like yeah that's a game i was like no 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 i just invented it right now she's like okay sure um let me i'm gonna just look up i'm gonna look up all right all right oh what, um, you're looking up quotes yeah, I'm just looking up famous. Like, so all, the like, game, inspirational. if you didn't hear it, uh, is a we 
You just say, you rephrase a quote, a famous quote, usually from like a movie or something, and uh, and then you rephrase it and see if the other person guesses it. That's the whole game. It has nothing to do with weirdness or anything, but it's a fun game, and I just wanted to play it again. All right. I, All right, you ready? I got... You ready? You ready? I oh, got... you... Okay, ready. you go first. You go first. Okay. To be honest to you, I do not particularly care. Uh, I did see that. I just saw I, I, I did see that one uh, when I was researching this. So I do know that is by cheating. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. All right, all right. And here's mine. You ready? Mm-hmm. You do not possess an adequately sized vessel. Dude, that's fucked up. For you to say. <laughs> uh, you're gonna need a bigger boat yeah hey jaws I've, ne- I've never seen that movie you haven't seen jaws no but uh, i have heard that at least it, it's it's pretty good um yeah but yeah yeah i'm sure all right do you have shark phobia or is it just a thing you haven't seen no it's just a thing i haven't seen yeah 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 yeah. Well, um, I there was a the did the ride at Disney World, you know, or whatever, or Universal Studios, uh, or the you like go out on the little boat, or is it just a, like what a robot is it a roller coaster, out of the water, something like that? Yeah, and it like sprays you with water, and like the sh- like the robot comes out of the water and like snaps at you, and like your boat starts to tip over, and you know, yeah, it's like a yeah. some kind of ride. I don't know. I was very young. Yeah, yeah, uh, great, a great ride to take a. <laughs> three-year-old time yeah yeah just terrifying. Like, you're never gonna get in the ocean again all right cool. yeah. yeah i mean a great preventative measure to, uh, yeah. to yeah. dealing with because i i imagine uh <laughs> i imagine uh that having a child at the beach like on the breach of the water <laughs> it's yeah. one of the most terrifying ideas it's nerve-wracking i'm sure yeah um you gotta get like a leash. That's when that's when kids kids should be on leashes. Yeah, they're yeah, hard yeah. to steal. You, they don't get into trouble. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they call it. That's kid <laughs> stealing. Kid stealing. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's funny that you what you said there sort of will overlap into my story. Just not that it has nothing to do with sharks, but about preventative measures for kids. It's well, a teaser there. Yeah, teaser. Fuck your story right now. It's my story now. We're doing All it right. now. Go, go, go. All right. So, um, my story isn't so much a story as a natural phenomenon mm-hmm. that is uh, probably most people have heard of that, you know, is weird and we don't talk about it enough. Uh, have you heard of mass mortality events? No. Or at least I've not heard of that term. So, but yeah, you have an idea of where I'm going with this. Sounds like bunches of people dying. I've heard of mass graves. Uh, not a bunches of people. Oh, okay. It's a vast. It's an incident that kills a vast number of individuals of a single species in a short period of time. Oh, okay, okay. So like so not like a so it's a it's a step it's not as severe as like a mass extinction event. Yeah, not quite. So it's not that severe. It's like a step down. It's not okay. like the meteor hitting Earth right. and killing right. the dinosaurs. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, it can put a species in risk of becoming extinct. Mm-hmm. Like put them at risk, uh, mm-hmm. and it it can certainly mess up an ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Um causes uh and i'm gonna get into like this isn't like like i said it's not a story i just have a bunch of little examples okay um the causes vary and a lot of times aren't particularly clear Mm, okay so causes can be like disease pollution climate change uh Mm -hmm. can factor Mm in oh uh, a lot of the time okay all right i'm gonna take a note real quick because i actually have something relevant to this uh okay but you might cover it but i want to make a note just in case yeah 
lot of time it's a combo of factors or that's mm-hmm. the thought uh an analysis of mass mortality events from 1940 to 2012 found that it's happening more and more with birds fish and marine invertebrates which are like jellyfish and squid and stuff who needs um, them uh yeah i agree fuck them uh, this, uh, this is actually, I hate to ruin your story, but it's actually because I am single-handedly out sailing the seas by night and just killing every invertebrate, oceanic invertebrate that I can find. Yeah, you go fishing and you you catch a fish and you just, the fish don't have like throats normally, but you just slit their throats slit and their throat. throw them in the water. Yeah. I take them to a lab and I pay a bunch of scientists to develop a throat for them and then I slit it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's messed up that you do yeah. that. But, yeah, um, well, I mean, without me, you wouldn't have the story, so it sounds like you should be thanking me. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's happening less with amphibians and reptiles, seemingly, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it has not changed uh, over that period of time, 1940 to 2012, when it comes to mammals, lucky for us. Um, uh, so... Here's here's a uh, here's a little little sweet little tale in March of 1904 1.5 million migrating birds died in Minnesota Whoa. and Iowa during a snowstorm. Wow. That's who, a lot. Who collects <laughs> birds? Who collects bird bodies and counts them? Especially back then. Like um you could, like, I don't know. It's, log it's it, probably you know? an estimate after, like, you kind of count as you go, or you weigh, spe- like, you put, okay, there's 400 blue jays, put them in a pile. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, you know, researchers and uh, scientists, uh, want to keep tabs on stuff going on in the ecosystem so uh yeah yeah. that's just a you know the reason why i'm interested in this is because in like 2008 or 2010 somewhere around those years i just remember seeing a news story that was like hey uh isn't this a quirky story Mm -hmm. a bunch of birds just fell out of the sky (laughs) <laughs> in this one area that's in, that's crazy uh they're dead uh and we don't quite know i i couldn't find the exact incident in my research i wasn't looking that hard for it right 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 but uh somewhat similar so 1.5 million migrating birds died and yes it was during a snowstorm but it still seems like a lot yeah, like, you know aren't, I mean? aren't they migrating to avoid snow? So it sounds like they're they were a little off in their um, yeah timing. Yeah, that's it's a more understandable uh, one than some of these, but uh, but yeah. So in September 1931, millions of birds died in Germany. Uh, disease, I believe, was the cause. Mm-hmm. I didn't look mm-hmm. into that one very much. I just had a long list, and I looked into some of them more than others. Yeah. Um, and I'm not like listing every one that's occurred right. at all. This shit right. happens all the time. Yeah. Um. Uh, May 1976, 200,000 birds dead around Lake Huron in Michigan. Uh, the the idea there was a rainstorm, so two hundred thousand mm. birds died around a lake. Um, in the rain, are yeah. they in the rain all the time? Like, what happened? Why is I this? I mean, why, why? they're in the this is you know, crazy birds are in happened. rain. <laughs> yeah, this is what it. This is like a glitch in the matrix. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's it's bizarre. It's just like. The scenario I think of is like, you are you live in a place, you've lived there for 10 or so years, uh, it mm-hmm. rains somewhat regularly, not extremely, but you know, 
rains mm-hmm. every now and then and uh you go to sleep one day it was raining you wake up uh it's either still raining or not but you wake up and you go outside and there's fucking dead birds everywhere <laughs> it's everywhere yeah you're like this is a like a horror movie uh, the, yeah but yeah man birds People, are getting the short end of the stick but yeah a lot of birds uh uh and mainly when it comes to the birds a lot of it is generally uh attributed to weather mm, mm-hmm. issues yeah uh and like a combination of weather and other uh things april 1985 off the coast of sweden more than 20,000 birds died mainly crows it was foggy <laughs> that's that's the explanation oh. There was Man. some fog. There was some fog. So, <laughs> so twenty thousand crows, thousands of corpses bit the to dust. wash up. Um, yeah, could they just like not come back to land? Did they just like die like out and over the water? That they, is it. Like... That is one of the things that does happen. Is don't uh, they have? Okay, is it? Don't they have like magnetic detectors and they can tell poles and stuff? And that's how birds can migrate. And then they can like. And yet, then it's just like their vision is obscured, and they're like, yeah, we're just going to rely on this for now and just die, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that uh, crow, like, I guess crows are smart. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I've seen, like, I've seen yeah. video of a crow solving a pretty complex puzzle, I remember. Crows are crazy <laughs> smart. Yeah. And they so, communicate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you have like a point Like to teach there. their offspring. Yeah. I don't know about the magnetic poles thing. I didn't look up uh, yeah. specifics to bird biology. Oh, yeah, yeah. This was more like a rhetorical question. I wasn't like, give <laughs> yeah. me answers. Like, I'm not questioning your research. I'm just like, whoa, I can't believe it. Like, it's hard to believe this. Yeah. Uh, this is story April of 1993 off the Louisiana coast. There was a tornado and 40,000 birds died. And it's like, yeah, I get that. <laughs> yeah, I get that one. I don't get the snow. I, I Maybe I can get the snow one. You know, like it was like a sudden yeah. blizzard. And the rain one, I don't, I don't really get. The fog one, I definitely don't get. And the tornado one, I, I get that. I mean, I feel yeah, like if air, any, if any animal creatures. can detect air current changes, though, like, you know, they would be able to... Also, they're super fast. Like, I, it seems like they would be very able to get away unless, like, it was, like, sudden and it just, like, sucked them. I don't know. Well, it was off the Louisiana coast. There's no, oh, like... Okay. okay, There's nothing they can get under or whatever to yeah, try okay. and protect themselves. Okay, I see. Um... So here's where it changes from the birds. Bird January rains. 2005, uh, thousands of giant squid wash up on the beaches of California. Ooh, don't like that. Uh, don't is, like this story. <laughs> which is very strange. This is creepy. Do As not like live, this story. <laughs> they live... <laughs> yeah, you, you're not into Cthulhu shit? Ah, uh, this is... This I mean something. Oh no, I don't even like to think about the implications of like all these super creepy, mythological, rare, elusive creatures just suddenly dying. So Ugh. they live generally uh, from two hundred and twenty feet underwater uh, during I I believe that's it during the day or yeah, and uh. then. Up to twenty three hundred feet at night. I don't even or, have a it might for be that. the day or night mile? might be flipped there. Twenty three hundred feet. That's uh, half a mile, right? A mile is like fifty five thousand or five. What is it? You know, I did not uh, <laughs> plug it into uh, Google <laughs> to figure that out, but how it's many a lot. feet is a mile? Like scuba divers, five thousand feet. So can't this is twenty three. Yeah, so this is half a mile. The scuba it's, divers traditionally cannot dive that far, so it's yeah. hard to observe these creatures yeah. uh, without like spending a lot of money. Um, and like yeah, they the tank won't even like pressurization. Yeah, whoa, recreational diving is one hundred and thirty feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this so was you can't this was two thousand three hundred. You said yeah, three hundred. Wow, yeah. The uh, record is a thousand feet. That's the record for a professional deep dive. Yeah. That's that's still not even halfway. Okay, yeah. All right. So researchers <sighs> were kind of baffled by this case. Mm-hmm. Um, one researcher suggested that they possibly ate something toxic 
and then spent too much time in warm water, and that caused them to become mentally deranged enough to beach themselves. <sighs> mentally deranged mythological sea creatures. I mean, I know they're real, but they're this so they're so like they're, they're almost, very they're, alien. They're yeah. ex cryptids. Like they are ex cryptids. People they were definitely yeah. I mean Well the other thing ahead. is it's not like the toxic thing is confirmed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's just an idea he had. <laughs> oh no 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 I mean like the the, the giant squids are ex cryptid. So like they're yes, no, I understand. barely understood. And so like now for something to kill them like you know, I, I think, I mean, this is just, I know, uh, you know, I'm an idiot and I don't know anything. My uneducated guess or like, I, just because you said this is on California's coast, right? Uh-huh. Like, I wonder, did this happen to like be around an earthquake or maybe like a fault thing, like under the water, like released a bunch of steam or hot, you know, and they tried to like swim to escape it or were, I don't know, you know, like that, like I... That seems like a thing that would happen, right? No, but they don't live that close to each other, so it would have to be, it'd have to be a huge fault. I mean, there are oh. big faults, but at the same time, I feel like if scientists can pin it on something, they would think right. of that. You yeah, know they I would. Mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I preface uh, this with I don't know nothing, but I see. You know, uh, yeah. unfortunate that I've decided to have you as a co-host. Of yeah. <laughs> talk about actual things that happened nah. but uh that's the air right. suck on my toe uh do that on your own time <laughs> just some like, asmr toe sucking uh go go over to pornhub my friend <laughs> i just this is a real, real sorry to interject here again but i yeah. accidentally today stumbled accidentally is the keyword here uh stumbled across um lemur eating asmr like not eating a lemur but like a little lemur uh like a cute little you know nocturnal like not like a bush baby or not a uh not the slow loris but just some kind of little lemur thing like that um yeah that they have this like super high-tech microphone very sensitive um and they like just put food right in front of it and so he just like and does like they record asmr videos of them eating you know i would foods. i would be interested in that yeah actually uh, he's real because cute it's to like watch. animal noises yeah 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 don't worry about uh, how i found that but it's funny welcome. that you that <laughs> i told you to go over to pornhub because of toe sucking asmr and uh i was I expecting am, I, you to go somewhere <laughs> else where with that um but uh, yeah, that took it I, to a pure place. Yeah, because yeah. I think last week you were like, "Well, I I recently found out about people being dogs to other people." Oh yeah, in yeah. sexual matter. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so yeah. I thought you were just exploring things sexually. <laughs> Here. And you just that's wanted for, to bring that's it for up the after dark every, podcast. Yeah, uh, that's behind the paywall. Um, which we mm. don't have, by the way, folks. No, at this no. point, we're very transparent. Um, so, so yeah, that's the end of the squid story. By the way, mm, mm, good. I don't like that one. Uh, <laughs> March two thousand nine, uh, twelve hundred penguins were found dead on the beaches of southern Chile. I didn't know the that next... there were penguins in Chile. That's news yeah. to me. Wait, are they supposed to be there? Because it's even more crazy if they're like randomly there. No, they're supposed to be there. Okay, uh, that's all right. Like that would be weird if they're like, "Hey, we found like five hundred dead polar bears in Texas." Be like, "What?" But, I mean, if they're <laughs> yeah, you know, okay. Yeah, it's not like a lost situation. Still weird. Where they're... Still weird. Uh, How did, yes. what, did they? What is the? What do they think? I'm getting yeah. to it. Okay. But okay. The next month. Uh, millions of sardines washed up on the beach not too far from where the penguins washed oh, up. Oh, a little food chain thing going on, maybe? Mayhaps. Uh, so it smelled real bad in that area. Oh, jeez, I bet. Schools closed and the army had to shuffle the fish off the beach. So millions of sardines. Just, yeah, that's... Just 
the beach instead of sand had a dead fish basically that's, yeah that's so much uh so and then thousands of flamingos abandoned their nests in northern chile within the next couple months this happened mm -hmm. uh leading to their to 2000 of their chicks to die within their shells uh and then in late may 60 pelicans were found dead in the central coast beach dude don't go to chile if you're a bird if you're a bird or a uh or a fish or a, yeah if you're an animal if you're directly uh, connected to birds in the food chain don't if you're if if you're an animal in Chile, you're going to be in Chile. Ah. There's no one solid answer for the deaths. The That's wild. Regular, the regular suspects of like global warming, pollution, disease, overfishing, were among ideas from the scientific community, but there's no consensus. So there's not like a solid answer on this. Yeah. Um... But yeah, I have more <laughs> if you want. I feel yeah. like I'm just going through a similar story, but no, I mean, I, I think like, I think, uh, I think some more, some more would be good. Okay. Uh, um, Jan yeah. Yeah. January, 2010, 40,000 dead crabs washed up on the Kent coast of England. The beach is littered with all these dead bodies, and now there's a shit ton of birds picking at these dead crabs. Uh, a, a year later, 25,000 dead crabs washed up on the same shore. Um, at first they thought it had been a virus, but they settled on it being the cold after the second year, which hmm. gave the crabs hypothermia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But neither are rock-solid confirmed facts. Hmm. They're educated guesses. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> December 2010, 200 dead seals wash up on the shores of Labrador, Canada uh, over the course of the month. What? Can you imagine? I mean, can you just like imagine like living there or being on vacation? Like that's your week vacation. You worked all year and you're going to the beach that week. And then you, the beach is just corpses and it just stinks. And there's, it's just, yeah. This yeah. is much less uh, than usual, and it's over the course of a month, two hundred. Yeah. But it's still yeah. like a few seals a day, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. that are on the same beach, and it's just like, whoa. Yeah. Uh, nothing came back uh, hmm. in toxicology reports, and there was no signs of disease being the cause. One theory was that the seals drowned, but why that many at that place Jeez. they don't know yeah mm. december 2011 mm -hmm. two million dead fish wash up on the shores of chesapeake bay the explanation according to maryland department of environment was rapid temperature drop combined with a large population of juvenile spotfish I don't know what the juvenile spotfish really have to do with it. Maybe they're too <laughs> young, don't have great immune systems. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, but there's that. Jeez. So fish and birds are really get the short end of the stick with this. Yeah. But uh, a, a new challenger enters the battle. January 14th, 2011. About 200 cows found dead in a field in Stockton, Wisconsin. Hmm. The owner of the cattle said they died, that he believed that they died of either infectious bovine rhinotracheitis, tracheitis, which is basically cow herpes, hmm. or my favorite phrase of the year so far, bovine virus diarrhea. Uh, yeah, that sounds like the, this sounds like a circle of hell. <laughs> that's like yeah uh yeah bovine Ugh. virus diarrhea uh you, which is that, the actual the, name the of a virus <laughs> the field after the, like that many cows have diarrhea to death 
Yeah, it's just, you would it's think just... you would know for sure that that's what happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, uh, is this the corpses rotting? Is that what smells? You're like, no, this is. They just died. It's their diarrhea that's been sitting and baking in the sun. Yeah. For some reason, people like picked up this news story and thought this event was biblical prophecy coming true. Yeah. You freak it out like it was end yeah. of days because some cows died in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how God's going to communicate with the world is uh, some cows in Wisconsin. <laughs> because some cows probably shat themselves to death. Shot, you're like, this is it. This is, uh, this is how my God communicates to me. My <laughs> my God communicates to me through bovine virus diarrhea. Well, you know how uh, people claim yeah. to see like the Virgin Mary on their toast and stuff like that, or like in water stains, and uh, like maybe the diarrhea makes a message, like in the you know. Yeah, I see. I see. I see Jesus in this cow's yeah. diarrhea. Yeah. Uh, I would be. Can you like that's insulting to a deity? Like, can you imagine? being jesus and you're like this guy is attributing cow diarrhea to me oh my god no i would do it in like clouds and stars and something <laughs> nice i'm not gonna are you kidding me i would do it in fucking dog diarrhea you yeah. idiot. <laughs> like, uh. <laughs> um but yeah uh, this is uh, the idea wild. that you know it's like the thing about it all is that for most of them it's not rock solid and I don't I feel like it could like you should be able to have a rock solid answer on a lot of these yeah 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 but apparently not uh yeah yeah so I only have a few more now okay so yeah hit them and then uh because I got a I got a couple of very related things that I learned about this week that I uh I would mm -hmm. like to to mention to you as well so I want to if you're okay with me putting off my topic for just a few minutes to... Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. March 2012, 5,000 seabirds, mostly pelicans, mm -hmm. were found mm -hmm. dead and dying on Peru's northern beaches. Hmm. This was dead largely... and dying? Yes. So, they're Still dead and dying, seemingly, of, uh, of starvation. They were emaciated. Uh, El Nino, which is a common climate pattern, yeah, was thought to be the cause. It's a heat. It, it's it's like a up, current or heat wave. Is it air yeah, or is it water? I don't know. It's some kind of heating up the air ocean air current. currents. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, yeah. It causing fish that they usually eat to swim deeper down. Now they don't have food. Right. And and also people think maybe overfishing contributed to it. No one solid idea. These were fish or birds? <laughs> These are pelicans. Oh, pelicans. Pelicans okay. and other sea birds. Okay. okay. But largely pelicans. Gotcha. And they're big birds. Um, yeah, yeah. 2014, January 2014, Australia. Over 100,000 flying fox bats. Which, do you know about these bats? Yeah. They're these specific the biggest bats? bats, right? They're the biggest bats, and they look like fucking dogs. Yeah, it's terrifying. <laughs> it's crazy. These are bats that look like foxes and are like that size. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so they died, and it's believed to be extreme heat events because of climate change. Hmm. So mm -hmm. in January of 2014, 100,000. Um. So that's the last specific event, but I wanted to go over a couple things. Yeah. Pilot whales beach themselves and die very regularly. Very regularly in groups. What? They seem to have a problem navigating shallow water uh, for some reason. Other than that, researchers don't know why they're doing it. I'm just like, maybe... ah, it's getting shallower, but maybe if we keep going... Like, yeah, I'm in the air, but let's just get more air. See if that gets water. Yeah, they're thinking maybe disease causes, maybe yeah. sonar is affecting them. 
Mm, mm, Maybe mm. S- something is leading them to swim into shallow waters and have yeah. trouble. But why? We don't know. Jeez. I thought you were about to say something. That's no, I'm just talking. I'm just processing this. I'm just thinking about, like, man. And one last thing is, uh, of course, bees in oh, more recent right. years have had uh, consistently had mass die-offs each winter. Mm-hmm. Uh, pesticides are suspected to be uh, a large part of the issue, mm-hmm. but not 100% confirmed. And that's bad <laughs> because bees yeah. are essential for our survival. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Got no more beans, bees, and then we are, we are boned, folks. Uh, nice. But that's really the story. I don't have like a con- conclusion yeah, to go with this. You're just like, all right, animals are just dying in waves and that's the end of the world. Cool. All right. Over to you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been the end of the world for a True. while. True. It's just becoming more and more the end of the world, seemingly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. Um, but. Did you want to bring up a specific thing now, or do you want to do it after the break? I think that actually, just now that I've built this up so much, I'm going to make it into a collateral damage episode. Okay, um, boom. So if that's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hit the break and be back with my tale, and then uh, at some point in the future, uh, after this episode airs, look forward to uh, more animal death stories from Whee! me. I mean, there was that story not long ago that uh, in the Bite Size Battles episode, you told them just, what, k- kitten genocide? <laughs> yeah, Wasn't yeah, that it just, one of them? It was the, yeah, the, the guy tried to kill all the cats. Uh, and then, yeah. yeah, and then died from the plague. Everybody died from the plague. I just laugh at that because of how dark it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's insanely. It's insane, yeah. Uh, crazy. But yeah, yeah so... Uh, We have a great story coming from Mystic Mm -hmm. right after this. This episode of War of the Wiz is brought to you by the phrase, bye-bye. If you want to end a call with a chalky farewell, just say bye-bye and all will be swell. If you want to break up with your lover, just say bye-bye and find another. That's bye-bye, because goodbye just isn't good enough. Now, back to the show. One thing before we get into your story that I wanted to bring up is uh-huh. I forgot to mention that just like the general idea of like my story is like this is a common occurrence that just happens, you know. Yeah. And yeah. when I heard that story of like the birds uh falling out of the sky and uh dead birds on the ground, it's a new story. Uh, like the scientists were going like, uh, yeah, this happens all the time. That's crazy. And my thing was like, and you didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're like, yeah, we know that animals just mass die. And you're like, you didn't think to bring that up to anybody. This, your whole job is to discover you stuff and tell us. You didn't think that was us. interesting <laughs> yeah. enough to tell the public, <laughs> like and inform them that an incredibly, uh, impactful, interesting thing was happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yep. That's funny. Um, all right. You ready? Yep. All right. Welcome back. Um, I I think we're probably, I'm going to, you know, we're, whew, we already are have the, the E for explicit on our podcast listing. Um, mm-hmm. And this, Again, I thought it was for everybody, but yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> rated E for everyone. Yeah, it's very confusing that they do that system. Um, yeah. I'm sure someone has probably told their parent that, like buying an album, because back when CDs used to be rated E for explicit, you know, it had like yeah. the track listings. I'm sure people are like, no, it's E for everyone. You know, with the games commercials, yeah. But usually it wasn't like it didn't have a giant E. It said no, explicit no. It's, parental yeah, advisory. It said parental advisory. Don't buy yeah. this. But like, uh, like when you would download the songs on iTunes and stuff, it had like the little E beside it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 In that era, for sure. Yeah. 
Um, or I, I think even the track listing on the back would have like the certain songs. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so anyways, I know, you know, we're, 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 we have the explicit warning. This, this next subject, my topic is, is definitely, uh, for mature audiences. So I'm saying that now. So um, I should leave. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. This is <laughs> okay. your, if you're immature, you can't handle it. I think Later. too, um, oh, what? <laughs> Later. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to talk to myself for an hour. It's just going to be the yeah. monologue the mystic soliloquy um, oh i uh, mystics pee pee poo poo <laughs> that's right that's right the new segment yeah, yeah. that will be behind the paywall yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it has to be yeah uh, um can't just broadcast that right yeah that's that's for for real enthusiasts uh i probably i probably will ask you to make uh, at the beginning of the episode um like a, just a little uh, you know a little mature audience warning um oh sure but, but uh, yeah, without further ado, um, let's talk about circumcision. Um, let's talk about circumcision. There we uh, go. There we go. Sex baby. That was the song reference that I was that, making. I don't think it was that clear. Uh, well, you that, know, I only know Matchbox joke. Twenty songs, so I yeah, I don't know. You're um, a boxer. Yeah, I'm a box. I'm a boxer. Um, Oh, all right, so there's there, I learned a lot this week. Uh, the things I didn't want to know. The first thing that just kind of came up real quick cause with circumcision is is, I mean, I guess I should, all right. So if you don't know, circumcision is <laughs> if you the, don't know what circumcision know, is. You, you should, should stop listening because you, you are stop under the age. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna say, I'm you will uh, late. You will it will be revealed later in this podcast that how common it is that people do not know about circumcision. Uh, so yeah, circumcision uh, is the removal of foreskin from the the human penis. Um, yeah, and you might so, be asking yourself, four whole skins, four whole skins, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, you don't know. It's it's the the human body is crazy. Um, in my in my yeah. research, I also learned about uh, penile um, sub incision, which is a genital modification or mutilation, depending on your perspective, which basically slices the underside of the penis mm-hmm. in, in the urethra, so it slid open. I'm lengthwise. listening. Yeah. <laughs> I'm loving it. Yeah. Uh, so there, you know, I'm mm, there. It's, what What is the purpose of that? Um. Well, they. I think it's. I, I really, I really. Some people do it. In some cultures, it's a rite of passage. It's a ritual for for adolescent boys becoming men. Okay, it's um, like a cultural thing. Yeah. 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 Um, there are also people who think that they do it, uh, for bloodletting. Um, I, it seems like there are other places you could go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for, so this revolts, for this results in hypospadius, uh, which is, so the, the urethra, instead of opening from the tip of the penis opens along the bottom side, um, usually causes males to have to squat while urinating um oh it doesn't just turn into like a a sink situation yeah and then it says actually uh that you can use this you can pull the scrotum up against the opening to like direct this towards the end of the spout so you're making it somewhat like a normal urination anyways cool anyways some, (laughs) some people who do this carry a tube with them so they can aim their urine anyways so that's the thing that that happens um, but no, I mean, that was just a quick little digression, not enough to be a collateral damage thing, but, um, yeah, so circumcision is, uh, you, you, you cut off, I mean, you don't, well, some people do it themselves, but, uh, cut off the, the foreskin around the penis. So if you don't know, the penis usually, um, has like a little turtleneck on it, the, the uncircumcised yeah. penis. 
and you cut a that large away. turtleneck a in large turtleneck. perspective of the penis itself. yeah yeah it's like the tur- if the turtleneck could come all the way over your head is that's that's what yeah. it is um <clears throat> Yeah, so the origin the origin of circumcision is not just so you know. I I had a joke. I I stopped myself. It was you sh- uh, everybody should be proud of me. Oh no, I want to hear. Uh, it. <laughs> yeah, the penis can come all over your head as well. Is gotcha, what I was going gotcha, to say. Because gotcha. <laughs> you said come all over your head. Yeah, yeah, that's it, funny. It's just come on. I buddy. guess that I guess that joke made the cut. <laughs> Because the, yes. the incision, because okay. the yeah. decision, the of decision. circum, yeah, um, yeah, nobody really knows like the origin of it. It's you know been ancient um, practice for thousands of years. Um, their fifth uh, century BC writings talking about it in cultures. Um, mm-hmm. There are a couple of proposed uh origins or a couple of reasons that that a a culture might circumcise people its children um so there's like first as it was a biblical thing begun by abraham and his descendants um yeah so uh it's you typically it's commonly observed we'll get into this by abrahamic religions like judaism and islam um a religious so a religious sacrifice um a rite of passage like i said with a sub incision but also uh yeah um as a form of quote unquote sympathetic magic to ensure virility and fertility um mm. that's magic with a k i wish but no no uh yeah you know uh, what I mean when I say that, right? There's no, a... I don't. Okay. Well, magic, the idea of like sort of magic as like a practical thing, as a the power of symbols and things like that, and oh. meaning and that type of thing. And then there's magic like, you know, fantasy. I mean, that magic is still pretty fantasy and right. weird. Yeah. But it's not at quite as they have like a whole philosophy around oh. their thing. They call yeah. themselves magician. Alan Moore, the guy who did uh, fucking Watchmen, who wrote that, he I believe considers himself a magician. I have no idea. In what that sense. this is? How do you? I have no idea about this. This this. You don't know about M A G I C K? No. Yeah, it's a thing. All right, that could have that could have, this is this you're the scientist that knows about bird death and I'm the person who's never heard of it. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't think to tell you. I don't I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a thing. <laughs> well, but uh yeah, yeah, I'll look into that. Maybe I'll be a magician. I'll be a magician monkey. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um the uh, other reason someone might get circumcised is to reduce sexual pleasure, which I'll explain why someone would want to do that. Um, hygiene, hygienic reasons. I uh, mean, I I understand that, like, because culturally, sexual things are bad for right. some cultures. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, it may even have been done to uh, denote people of high status in a, in a culture. Um, you're like, yeah. I'm, I'm the, <laughs> hey, check I'm out the, my status. I'm the bourgeoisie. <laughs> Look at my my absence oh, of foreskin. Oh, you're not gonna allow me in this club? Check this out, boys. Uh, that's very uh, funny. We'll get to that. That's actually that's. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Okay. Uh, I foreshadowed on accident. Yeah, it, better than foreskin. <laughs> uh. And also as a way to humiliate enemies and your slaves. You know, you conquer people and you cut their foreskin. <laughs> so you either do it if you want to or do it because uh, to so. humiliate people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're yeah. either like the coolest people or the lamest people in society. Yeah. And you can, maybe that's how you can infiltrate the, the 1%. You know, you're like, look, I'm one of you. And they're like, you're not, you're not. And you're like, look at my penis. And you're like, all right. I don't know who let you. All right. Out, but... Well, I'm calling the police. But yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. And there's actually uh, something called 
aposthia, which is a congenital condition where the penis has no foreskin. Um, and people think like that, that people born with this condition are, uh, are quote unquote born circumcised and they are mm. like important religious figures. Um, yeah. So Anyways. there are certain people that think that that are fringe or is that like a common belief in some religion? No, that's a common uh belief in well that was it was now is quote it was now discredited by Lamarckian theories of evolution, but um yeah, it was a it was a thing that um was a commonly held belief in Ju- some part like some uh sex denominations i don't know in judaism i don't know what the term yeah. would be uh de- yeah but um yeah yeah i don't know not sex. that everybody believed it but you know um yeah and this was like real early in the like in history this isn't like yes early times it got yeah. disproven and yeah. they they moved on with the times yeah. when that happened yeah. yeah um so that's a little background real quick uh so one leading so one reason well actually all right well okay so one reason like you you mentioned was to dissuade people from sexual promiscuity or uh proscribed sexual behaviors as wikipedia says um discourages masturbation or you know lasciviousness um Mm -hmm. And that was, yeah, and so, like, for religious covenants, when when pe- people do it, like, in religion, it's just, like, because there's a whole aspect of, like, our, you know, the flesh and the spiritual world, and that, you know, uh, you don't want to give in to the flesh, you want to be strong in spirit and not succumb to the desire, like, fleshly desires, and so you would circumcise yourself, or your, you, like, your whole people would be circumcised, um, so that they would to give them a leg up in the battle against the, their body, you know? Yeah. Um, today, the World Health Organization and a lot of medical people, experts, uh, also say, you know, it's, it's, it's lowers your risk of urinary tract infections. Um, it lowers your risk of penile cancer. It reduces mm. the risk of catching and spreading HPV. It also lowers the risk of some STIs, including HIV. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, in like, in there, I was reading about some zones in Africa where they like, there was like very heavily, like a very high HIV population. And they, I don't, I don't know if it was like, I, I do not know enough about this. This was not the focus of my topic, but. I don't know if they forced people to be circumcised or if they just implemented it like for hygiene reasons, but they noticed that HIV rates drastically went down and like almost were eradicated in that area. So, mm. and then they started looking into it and were like, yeah, this is a thing. So I don't know, like it wasn't the reason that people were circumcised there, but they noticed that trend in like highly populated areas. Um, yeah. So um, there's, there's a lot of reasons for it there's you know people yeah there's there's it's, it's grounded in some science um not everybody does it um in fact uh it's like statistics for exit like hospital exiting polls <laughs> uh show that about 55% of male babies are circumcised now so that's almost half <laughs> Are not hospital exiting. Polls. That's funny. <laughs> I'm picturing somebody like at the literal entrance of the hospital <laughs> with a clipboard and just like, did you cut that baby's penis? Like, Can I it's see just that like... baby's penis, please? They're like, no. You're like, it's for research. Yeah. I'm, I'm um, gonna need to see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that's the background because the topic of my story is about a group of people who call themselves intactivists who advocate for abolishing circumcision and who are tr- attempting to regrow their foreskin. Oh, you know, I have heard of this general idea. I didn't I wasn't aware of regrowing the foreskin. Yeah. 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 So, 
um there there's a group a group of of men um i should say real quick too just like for information's sake like it is it is it is possible for to to like circumcise the vagina well like the labia not like the actual you know not the cat like the whole not the cat anyways but and it's like done for in some cultures to as like a form of like res, like repression or oppression of women and pleasures and you know uh yeah it's it it's from what i understand seems to be drastically more uh af- like have a drastically more have a more drastic effect i was gonna say more effective that's not what i mean have more of an effect on like for negative uh negative effects for women um, yes because yes. like female circumcision female circumcision is bad. it yeah it it's like a i mean you, you bad thing bad thing it's genital mutilation disguised as a legitimate procedure uh and like and men, like men they who are do it to punish people right right, right. yeah yeah <laughs> so like if it's, it's someone like... who commits adultery then they'll like circumcise like circumcise them so that they no longer can experience sexual pleasure yeah it's fucked it's yeah. fucked up yeah and like it's worth it's worth noting that men who are circumcised almost all of them can still still full sexual function um <laughs> i mean yeah i think people I, in our our country and our most country, western countries yeah, yeah. Uh, uh would understand that a yes. lot of the population is circumcised yes so. and there's still people having kids so yeah, yeah. um yeah and uh anyways so the people people reg- this is the part of the story where i'm just gonna straight up say i th- i think i have no qualms with the argument about like about people who want to regrow their foreskin or who think that they should have been offered the choice but about mm-hmm. being circumcised or not that's i'm setting that aside i think that that's a legit argument but I will say in research, just on my, this is strictly my opinion, reading and watching the interviews with people, these, the people who like, who are trying to regrow their foreskin, the majority of them are, I don't want to be sensitive, uh, are ludicrous in their arguments. Um, mm. So I want to be, I want to, you know, I, I'm trying to balance the the idea versus the way it's being argued or the... I have an idea of what an argument could be. I'm, Can I, I pitch it to you? Go right ahead now? and pitch some because I've got a couple of, uh, couple of examples. So the, the one idea that I would think of is that you are mutilating a child's genitals, essentially, and you don't quite know because it's such a regular practice how like that as trauma to a baby you know right how that exactly is fe- affecting their mental state right maybe right yeah yeah experiencing such like pain and trauma you know um like traditionally for if you're circumcised for religious reasons usually it happens like eight days after birth so like you know and that's, I would say that's a legitimate argument. Like you don't know, you don't like that's, you know, such an early and impressionable age and we know like childhood trauma and things are like, you know, so that's, that's a, like, I would, I would say that's a reasonable argument. Like there are good arguments for this. I'm not saying, I'm not making fun of the idea. I'm not making fun of yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the, the, the re, there are legitimate reasons. Like people will say, well, like, you know, it's not natural. This is just something that, you know, and I mean, like that, I mentioned that there are health benefits that are attributed to it. Um, but yeah, I want. Yeah, I, I'm. You know, I, yeah, there are legitimate because I, for this. I, I was actually interested in this idea, like because, like, why are people so into this? And just that one argument alone, I was like, well, I get that argument. Yeah, and I did look into it further. I actually have like a fucking uh, American circumcision is like a documentary that is oh, on yeah. my list. Oh yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um. There are, so a lot of the people, <clears throat> like, maybe another way of saying this is, like, I think a lot of these people that I like, had that, that, that were interviewed, I'm not saying everybody that's, you know, 
everyone that I encountered specifically in the interviews uh, seemed to have like something else like deep seat. Like this was a, this was like, they sort of like pick this, they had some other issues going on like with anger or, or something. And this was kind of like what they chose to like symbolically or yeah, project they, their, their cause onto. They funneled it into this right, cause. Right. Uh, yeah. So um, seemingly right. according to you. Right. Basically. This is completely my opinion, and yeah. I'm I'm not like yeah. Anyways, so I'm 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 gonna roast some of this these these arguments and some of these people. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, just because it's some of it is crazy, but um, real real quick though. So the about regrowing the foreskin. So there's a company called Foragen, um, who that is working to uh, grow foreskin. Um, like from bull, they started with a bull foreskin and like, you know, stem cell stuff and regrow the foreskin. Um, and it's completely crowdsourced. Um, in 2015, they had $40,000 raised by 200 people. So that's a lot. That's so an average of a person. That's a lot for that's, yeah, that small that's an, amount. That's people. an average of every person donating $200, which is probably not the case, but uh like it's yeah. probably you know a few people donating a few dollars here and there and then like some large sums by people but that's a lot of money for just that few people um mm-hmm. they're uh they're also foreskin is used in a lot of beauty products um if you didn't know so there's a foreskin fibroblast flakes uh they're foreskin fibroblast flakes so um it's uh they're 85 bucks um uh like for this kit or whatever with the flakes in it um that you can use <laughs> so like sell them to companies the idea behind them, it it's like stem it's cell marketed flakes as from, rub yeah. foreskin on your face <laughs> yeah it's great so like the point it doesn't it, do anything for you but rub it on your face yeah yeah so so the original point of it was to grow skin for burn victims like sensitive mm. thin membranous skin like eyelids um, or for people who uh, like have diabetic ulcers that won't close, um, mm-hmm. but of course, uh, the good old American commercialism now makes uh, makes cosmetic creams, um, and it's actually used in a lot of lip injections. Uh, <laughs> Oprah Winfrey publicized a company called Skin Medica. And they create a face cream. It's a hundred bucks for point six three ounce bottle, and its primary ingredient is uh, foreskin. Um, like, yeah, foreskins. Um, yeah, that's that's weird. What's the issue? It's that's... dick skin. You rub it on your face. Yeah, come on, come on. Um, there's a guy named Paul Tanari, and I did not look into who he was, but he has a lot to say about this issue. Um, mm-hmm. cause this was, this was not the, like my original, my topic is really good about regrowing the foreskin, but this is a couple of things that I found that were crazy. Um, yeah. he said the average foreskin sells for about a hundred thousand dollars and he advocates for men who are circumcised at birth, uh, and says that they're entitled to that, to that money that, the hospital should pay them the hundred thousand dollars because that's they, that's how much they can sell for. That's very reasonable. So and, uh, I mean, I think I should get a hundred. I was gonna say I would do it for hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> like I don't care how ludicrous. Like if there's I'm a chance that I'm gonna get hundred thousand dollars for this. Like yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally for this. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's crazy that it's used in like skincare creams, but anyways. Um, there's an invention. There's a couple of a couple of inventions to help regrow the foreskin. So, well, first of all, people get grafts from uh, like other areas, like the scrotum, get skin to borrow to like reattach as foreskin. But there's also something called the TLC tugger, which is it's basically the same <laughs> as grow as like gauging your ear, but with your penis. So what you do is you put like it's it's like a um, Think about think if think about two you know like the dog or the animal cones like the vet cones that you that put on your pet yeah right? yeah yeah okay take that shrink it down to fit on a penis and then turn it upside down and then put it on the penis 
So it's a lot of work that you're making me do. I right. gotta take yeah. that cone, yeah, and then <laughs> I gotta shrink it down. I don't have a shrink ray. Well, that's that's you know that's your problem. That's not my problem. I'm trying to help you regrow foreskin. Uh, um, yeah. So you put the cone down on the on the penis, then you bunch up some of the skin to like overlap that cone. And then you put like a second cone on top of it. So it's like stacked and that skin is pinched between the cones. And then the first cone, the bottom layer, actually has like a little hook on the end of it that you can pull. You gently tug on it. So it's called the TLC tugger. You pull on it and it like stretches your foreskin or stretches your penis skin out to become foreskin again. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, there's, uh, one guy, let's see, let me, I gotta get his name right. Um, uh, he, um, um, Shiny foreskin. Yeah. The TLC Tugger foreskin was invented, um, by, um, Ron Lowe. He's the founder. Um, he, he created this. Cousin of Rob Lowe. Yeah. Famously. Yeah, Yeah. And some people even attach like wear like a special there's a special underwear with a weight that they can tie to the to the to like the hook on the end of it so it's like perpetually tugging you wear it in your underwear throughout the day um, and it's just very uncomfortable and they do this for years oh. with the with the off chance sometimes it works all right Rob Lo, Ron, Ron Lowe <laughs> Ron Lowe he's the founder he, I think he did it for sometimes he, it works. It's such a funny I mean, it, idea. It works depending to... on how diligently you do this. But yeah. uh, Ron Lowe, he was on that Howard Stern show, and he he showed his whole setup, and he showed his regrown foreskin. There's a YouTube video that shows it all. Uh, mm. It's yeah, he he yeah. Um, so that's that's one. There's another. There's a few other companies that that are you know regrowing or trying to regrow stuff. Most, you know, like people are dying every day from like lack of kidneys. And like, instead of like doing research on how to create kidneys in a Petri dish, we're looking at regrowing foreskin. And, um, yeah. So, um, the one, oh man. So the, 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 inter- the website that I came across, which is very popular apparently in the, in the intactivist uh circle and it it just it's it's called um the circumcision complex and um they argue that circumcision um has a lot of negative effects on the person um Mm -hmm. and now like like you were saying like you 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 propose that like potential trauma and pain and things like that on a baby like that's dangerous or could be you know we don't know enough yeah and, yeah and i agree with you and if that was the argument that they were using then i would i would be on board with this but uh i'm going to read you a quote um uh circumcision troubles the spirit and generates unappeasable mental passions. It makes people restless, insecure, introverted, inferring, conjecturing, detached, timid, authority-seeking, reliant, apprehensive, God-fearing, devoted, idealizing, pious, penetrating, over-intellectual, and overproductive, and zealous in their pursuits. Um, they have so a, just yeah. all things, both positive and negative. Mm-hmm. These are all supposedly <laughs> <Just> negatives. <laughs> so they they have a little chart, like a little flow chart of like, you know, circumcision happens arrow here's the effects so um circumcision creates an erogenous deficit because it is so people there is sex can can happen more quickly or or orgasm can be reached more quickly if you're circumcised um i've read stories about people who were like i got circumcised for my partner because she had never she didn't like she never been with someone that wasn't circumcised and i used to be able to orgasm in a few seconds and now it takes me like 10 minutes and yeah i'm just gonna say most women or most partners will appreciate that you can last a little longer so i'm just you know don't put that in the cons column yet um no they don't no no, they don't (laughs) it's uh, just like like, yeah yeah 
Uh, um, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, a few seconds is not a great uh, sexual experience yeah, for you're... most people. Yeah. It's going to be. Yeah. Uh, that seems like a very selfish, uh, you know, sort of thing. If you're just like, I'm done. We're done. Yeah. Anyways, that's just my opinion. Yeah. You know? Um I've also read a story about a guy, a girl who walked in on a guy. There were Tinder dates. It was a Tinder date and it happened recently and they had both like quarantined to meet up. They were going to watch a movie at his house and she walked in on the bath. He was, he was not circumcised. She walked in on the bath in the bathroom with him as he was cleaning up. And uh, because when you're circumcised, when you're not circumcised, you can get like you're between the skin uh, of your penis you can get like a buildup of dead skin follicles and things like that or dead oh, skin he was i mean cleaning it's called, his penis is right. what you're saying yes yes yeah. it's, it's called smegma it's just like a you know sort of like a and i'll say like toe cheese you know but in your folds of your penis um and yeah, also it's the when breakfast you, of champions yeah some call it. yeah <laughs> it's a delicacy um and then when you uh when you pee you sometimes you get urine like a little dribbles of urine still like trapped in there with like it's you know it's, it's yeah anyways yeah so he was cleaning it she walked in saw it and freaked out and screamed that he was a freak because she had never even heard of circumcision did not know it was a thing um yeah a lot of the interviews of people that i watched did not know that they were circumcised until they were with a partner that was not circumcised like i was i watched a video by one guy and he was talking about his boyfriend was not circumcised and he's I mean, there he's like 20 and so you know anyways so um all right here's the flow chart circumcision circumcision produces an erogenous deficit the circumcision complex is is a uh, call is is call is a uh, culminated by dissatisfaction insecurity advance of abstract reasoning and obsession with the impalpable it creates abstract awe god-fearing and religiousness uh, it makes it uh, pushes people into abstract sciences and arts, and creates possessiveness, male chauvinism. Ac- oh, man, I practice this word a bunch, and I've still never got it right. Acquisitiveness, basically greed, trying to acquire things, uh, and commercialism. So, this website asserts that circumcision causes people to go into like physics and philosophy and have like abstract thinking and pursue uh, intellectual things. Um, and it produces abstract reasoning. All of these are cons, according to them. By the way, yeah, it's really bad. These are abstract <clears throat> art. Oh yeah, no! Yeah, um, a- I just want a picture. All. So, like, when <laughs> I just you, want the people yeah. to draw the fruit in the bowl, and that's it. <laughs> Everything should be literal. Yeah, that's like you know when you go to the mountains and you like look over this overlook and you're just like breathtaking nature. That's because you're circumcised. That shouldn't happen. You should hate that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you should just be like. You should just not even think about it. Just be like... Yeah, yeah. Um, it's also uh, contributes to the Oedipus conflict. Or Oedip- Oedipus complex, sorry. Um, uh-huh. I want to read you this paragraph. I, wanna, I mean, not just you, but the listeners too. I want to read this paragraph because it's gibberish. This is this is a real... Someone very legitimately and and unironically passionately wrote this. And it's all nonsense. Okay. The Oedipus conflict as an outcome of the circumcision syndrome. Psychoanalysis diverts one attention from circumcision. It is convenient for one to consider that one's sexual frustration has occurred in the past of which he has no memory as a result of imprinted fears from the preceding generations. None of that makes sense. Uh, No, it does. He's talking about, uh, (laughs) I guess, fucking his mom. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, so. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, continuing, this view conceals the real physical suppression of sexuality in adults by readdressing it to early childhood and human prehistory. The psychoanalysis Preach. diverts. The, <laughs> the, 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 so this is that's what I was referring to earlier when you were talking about like preventative measures for their children. Like, uh-huh. so he's asserting that adults, instead of dealing with their own suppressed sexuality, they like project it onto their kids and make them get circumcised. I don't, mm. but I mean, they had kids, so they were sexual in some capacity. Anyways, the psychoanalysis yeah. diverts the attention from physical factors causing sexual dissatisfaction and masks the role of circumcision in suppressing sexuality. It relieves the fathers of the responsibility for the possible suppression they may exert on their son's sexuality by circumcising them. I don't understand any of that. 
Like it's all, yeah, really. it's all, it seems very all highly intellectual, which is the not good. Cause that's a con of circumcision. Um, yeah. I don't I also, He's I can't, got... I can't figure out how people, like I said, I'm behind, if you, if I'm behind the idea of like, I want to, I would like, I want the autonomy of making that decision, or like, you know, exploring like the effects on on childhood trauma and pain like I, i'm 100 on that I, and i can get by, like i can see how that argument would attract people or create detractors for circumcision i don't understand how yeah. anyone re- reads that paragraph and is like i'm sold like it it, do- it doesn't yeah <laughs> it doesn't make any sense it that readdresses sexuality is, to early childhood and human prehistory that does not, also, not make any sense it's just a funny premise that uh somebody who wrote that is so anti-intellectualism yeah uh because all of that is so uh unnecessarily complex wording and talking in circles and shit yeah uh obviously trying to sound intellectual and legitimate yeah but seemingly saying very little and the little it does say is like what yeah yeah um, my favorite part of this website, though, is that it has a, a notable circumcised list of people who important. And this this is all this is all based on the psychological state of people. This is all like we can guess that they're circumcised because of this. So, like, because of these qualities. Oh, so they don't know. No, they, they yeah. have not confirmed this. Correct. Um, cool. But they say that we consider their data, our data, trustworthy because it's immediate and delivered by reliable sources. Oh, good. So, um, yeah, yeah. Um, so that you can check that out. Um, oh, you weren't going to say I can, a couple. I can, I can read thing? a couple. Let me let me click. I think um, some of these you might have to pay to access parts of this website, um, and I'm <laughs> not doing that. Okay, Donald Trump. Um, Lawrence yeah. Harvey, Mick Jagger, uh, Donald Sutherland. Um, the yeah. way you said Mick Jagger, you made him sound like a fucking sandwich at McDonald's. Get the uh, <laughs> Mick, Mick Jagger? Jagger, please. The uh, double Mick Jagger. Yeah. Um, double Mick Jagger with cheese. I wonder if he creates Hold like a onions. Mick Jagger bomb, you know? Like it'd be like the Mick oh. Jagger bomb. Yeah. So anyways, this is... Um, yeah. This is, these are the, so basically if you're circumcised, like this, these people have given up all legitimate arguments and research for this like pseudoscience about how circumcision makes you intellectual and that's bad. Um, so I guess they're anti-intellectualists. I don't know. And like, I hate to use the comparison between like incel as a, but like the, the vibe I I got from a lot of people like this were like raging anger at their parents for circumcising them. And like, just, I mean, this seems like very like that. So that's what I was saying earlier. It seems like misplaced frustration. Um, Like there are interviews with people and they like interview the kid and then his mom and his mom's like, I mean, I don't like, I didn't do this to her. Like, to hurt him i did this literally to help him for the health benefits and because like most people that i know do it and have done it and yeah um like yeah it was not like intended to be an attack but these people think like oh my parents are conspiring against me and they're trying to suppress me and my sexuality and all this stuff it just even if like there weren't that many health benefits if like everybody almost everybody in your culture does it like most people you know are doing it and you're like well, I don't want my kid to be the odd one out, yeah, I guess, yeah, maybe. Yeah. So not that that's like the reason <laughs> right, to do it. Right. Traditions can be a reason for gets, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> somebody gets circumcised or not, generally. But yeah. it's just like why 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 would you just like draw a line and just be like, No, that was fucked up. Yeah. It's just that's a simple enough thing that she like well, I wish she hadn't, but I get it, you know, right? <laughs> just yeah, based yeah. on that one thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, this, like, the, the that's what, like, the impression I got from, it was very much, like, rebellious teenager, just like, my parents are so lame, they ruin everything, Ah, nobody understands me, and, like, real jaded, and, like, you know, it's just, yeah, I don't know. And, like, I, this one guy's like, I remember the moment I realized I was circumcised, and I just, like, was filled with rage, 
you're like, I don't, I mean, I don't, I, I mean, I, I don't know. So, you know, on there and giving them the benefit of the doubt, uh, I like maybe this is a manifestation of their trauma of being like experiencing circumcision as a baby. I don't know, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's I don't know, but uh, it's I, I was just yeah I I started the story because I heard about uh, my friend was telling me about the video that she watched where these guys are trying to regrow their foreskin. Um, it's and then so I then I from there I stumbled onto the in, intactivism. Uh, pages and forums and then the circumcision complex website so this was really just going to be like hey people are regrowing their foreskin are trying to isn't that crazy or isn't that not crazy like isn't that wild it's pretty odd yeah yeah uh and then learned about how like people foreskins are worth thousands of dollars and people put foreskin like cells in their makeup products and how people like yeah that's and that was wild and then the assertion that people should be entitled to a hundred thousand dollars of payback from hospitals that circumcised them and then like all that was pretty crazy but then when i when, as soon as i started reading about the like circumcision makes people gives them abstract thinking which every psychologist who has a theory of development is like that's the highest level of thinking like i don't understand how that's a bad thing yeah it's it's very weird. It was very weird when you were reading off the list of things because some of, to me, it seemed very apparent that some of the things on that list that they were saying were all cons were good and some were bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. It, yeah. It, it wasn't like, oh well, obviously, if somebody has uh, abstract thinking or yeah if somebody doesn't yeah. come within three seconds of sexual activity yeah. that's a problem yeah uh i think but, too yeah. it's funny because i think about like i think about like uh reaching or- orgasm quickly and then like not then like you're kind of you, you're like i don't know you're tapping out or you're like not you know it's then it's not as enjoyable for the partner because it might take your partner a little longer than that but uh-huh. but like being circumcised can delay that uh but then it's associated with chauvinism and self-centeredness and like i don't but i think literally what you're saying is i want to come faster so i don't that seems selfish i don't i don't know yeah but, your uh, own pleasure yeah. is basically one of the things you're concerned with with yeah, this and, yeah yeah uh, basically like a lot of the arguments were like i should be in my basement masturbating all the time because i should be able to come really quick and like that seems like and and being circumcised has broken me from that you're like, all right, well, but how I, I not... disagree with that because circumcision makes you last longer, so then True. you can do it all the time. True. True. Whereas if it takes you're coming, yeah. you're gonna have to. Ha- there's a refractory period. Right. Is circumcised right. or no? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Take that, people who want to masturbate all the time in their basement. That's true. Fuck that's true. you. Figure it out. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so that's. I'm just uh, saying words at this point. Yeah, yeah that's. Go ahead. I mean, your 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 words are making more sense than the actual arguments for this group. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much my story. It was just I didn't even know which part to focus on because I was just like, this is all like the more I find out, the wilder this tale gets. So that yeah, I'm not trying a... to throw off on people that are or are not circumcised or want to be or wish they weren't or whatever. Uh. You know, people are entitled to their bodies and do what they want to do. Um, yeah. But I do think that if you say that uh, circumcision causes people to be smart and that's a bad thing, then you probably were not circumcised. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's a little the, odd, though. I mean, I really... The, the idea of being anti-intellectual is... That's like a common... Yeah thing to think yeah. is that intellectualism is bad yeah and that is fucking insane to yeah. me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. intellectualism is very good it's very good to be very intellectual yeah i mean i think that uh, allows for a greater depth of like empathy and kindness and like understanding the needs of others and like well it's just if a lot of people are that way yeah i feel like progress you, know, you could get a lot more done yeah uh yeah but but yeah, anyway, also, I wanted to note, the Collateral Damage episode, I actually have a story related generally to your story. Oh, wow. So, All right. Yeah, we'll do a little switcheroo So we'll here. have a, 
we'll have a combo collateral damage where we switch uh topics kind of yeah um um so i have no idea what to call this episode because it's i i don't think we should put foreskin in the title but uh i mean we could but uh what what is the name of the group uh intactivist or intactivism which and like which i will say too as a little disclose disclaimer uh people who are arguing to not mutilate the bodies of babies if that's what they believe is happening that's noble that's noble i'm not making fun of the whole group that's fine yeah, yeah. if you think that like this is like in need this of its pointless pain and trauma then i that's 100 percent legitimate reason and argument uh you know i think there are pros and cons to to circumcision um and then the, but if you think that yeah i've made clear my point about intellectual or anti-intellectualism so so intactivism so not all intactivists that's... you know have this okay view. so this isn't okay. no no there are some that just right. you know but they pick it and protest and stuff you know so uh yeah not all intactivists are bad uh or or have faulty logic but uh some are some are pretty reasonable and have well researched so let's go over premises. your story generally real quick is mm-hmm. basically you go over why foreskin is why circumcision happens what circumcision is mm-hmm. and then you go over these intactivists who want to regrow uh, or want to and they want to regrow or just stop circumcision pieces. from being a commonplace thing yeah, yeah. so let's say circumcision antics <laughs> i don't know <laughs> the circumcision decision i don't know uh we'll 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 settle on uh that yeah part of the title later uh mine is just mass mortality events oh let's let's put in place the new uh thing that i came up with Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. the so right now i would like you to type in mass mortality events into google if you would okay and just tell me what the number is of results mass mortality events uh it says about 124 million results. 124 million? Mm-hmm. And now let's say, I guess let's say just circumcision, because we don't we didn't settle on a right, title. Right. Uh all right. Circumcision. Huh. Forty five million seven hundred thousand results. Really? Really. So wait, 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 wait. 47? Did you put it in quotes? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me do that again. All right. In quotes, uh, 28 million. 28 million 28 was million which one? For circumcision, in quotes. I don't even understand the quotes difference for circumcision. It's one word. How is the quote different? You know what I mean? Yeah. What, what does that mean? Yeah. I don't okay. Know. So mass mortality event in quotes. Mortality please. events plural in quotes. Sure. Eighty thousand. Now do it without uh, the S. Sixty thousand. What? Yeah. Okay, so mine was the more obscure one. Yeah. This is the first point in my favor, mm-hmm. so I get a point. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you have you heard of mass mortality events maybe not the phrase but yes the idea i have yes, yes. and i had i had heard of uh the majority right of what you said other than specifically the regrowing right of the force well i will say i don't know if it's, if this matters to your to you or not in my list of potential topics for war of the weirds that i have like as a document I have regrowing foreskin. So that was like, I don't know if like it matters that that was going to like, that was my original like topic and uh, then found you, all this other I mean, stuff. Sure. We'll, but. we'll give it, uh, we'll give it the point to you on that one. Mm-hmm. And that is up. So the, the system is general obscurity, personal obscurity. Right. And then uh, we go into the, the last one, which is, just what was it personal belief yeah do i believe that it is weirder that massive amounts of animals die uh with 
no rock solid explanation or it is weirder that circumcision happens at all, first of all but also <laughs> yeah uh but also there's got so much are, pushback there are pushback and people trying to rev- against oh it. i forgot one major part of my story not a major part of my story but i forgot a part of my all story. right uh we can finish up because i don't think it's going to influence the okay so do i think it's weirder mm, actually no i want to say i want to add this i want to add this yeah. in before you so do it uh herodotus or herodotus depending on how you pronounce his name uh recorded that in the fifth century bc uh so this this is like when uh, um alexander the great um all that like so the greeks all right i'm just all over the place reporting this now so the greeks uh like they were not circumcised and they found they believed that if uh if a male still had his foreskin covering his penis then he was not nude so when they worked out they were they were naked but they weren't you know they didn't believe themselves to be nude but um so i thought you know regrowing circumcision that's just like a a first world like problem uh you know thing but Uh i found out that there were um that uh back during this time uh in like fifth century bc um jews were trying to hide or reverse their circumcision so they would be allowed to work out in the gymnasiums with the Greeks. So for thousands of years, people have been trying to hide or reverse their circumcision. And that, that blew mm-hmm. my mind. I was like, all right, that's, they tried to do that so they could work out nude. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to so, say you won this one. I'm going to, I was going to, that's, I think that's like, that's a, a critical point uh, worth making was that regrowing force. No, no, no. Is... I'm going to give it to you that uh, <clears throat> because though there aren't a a rock solid amount, it it isn't rock solid. It is a common. Um, it's a common uh, natural occurrence. Mm-hmm. My thing. Yeah, yeah. That you know, I just believe. I and people believe is strange. Yeah, but. I feel like the specific activist group. Right. Uh, I just find human psychology a lot stranger mm-hmm. than natural things yeah. that happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'm giving you the point. Thank you. So, are Thank you, you saying? Are you saying that you think that your topic is stranger than mine? I do think that this time. I do think yours is very right. weird, but I do think that. Uh, that this is to me strange. Okay. So then boom boom ba bum king kong N- none of that is I'm not going to do that again in the future <laughs> episodes. Uh, we can but, cut it, make it a sound bite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very important that mm-hmm. I do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh so you win this right. episode Woo. goes to Mystic. Nice. And I believe this is the first in the next series of wins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, one on the board for the Mystic. Nice. Uh, uh, and, you know, we we got a collateral damage episode coming at you. Yeah. Where, surprisingly, uh, <laughs> we flipped uh, topics, kind of. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're coming at you long and hard i don't know why but that was the first thing that came to my mind i can't but... can't, can't imagine why that, that was uh stuck in your head yeah uh so i hope you all have a long and hard day mm-hmm. uh or a long and easy day or short and easy day i hope you have a day yeah. <laughs> i hope you exist during daytime <laughs> uh and uh we will see you on the next one Thank <laughs> you.